Hello everyone, Alex here from warnoffkeys.com and in this video I'm going to show you how you can do basic reverse engineering of public APIs to try and learn how different APIs on different websites work and how you can then implement those APIs into your own software. So the reason why I came across this problem is because within the Discord server for Warn Off Keys, a lot of people would share code snippets. For example, I can paste in a code snippet here and whenever people would share those, Sometimes you wouldn't have line numbers and sometimes they'll be incredibly long. And so it's very difficult to actually help people with their coding problems. As you see here, I've developed a solution to this where the bot will automatically upload this to one of the many source sharing websites. So I can go ahead and click on this link and we then see the code right here. However, whenever I was approaching this problem, I didn't see a specific API on this website. And it seemed like this was one of the websites that the people within the community were frequently wanting to use. So I wanted to try and use this one if possible. I Googled source bin API, source bin NPM package, and there was a couple things that popped up. But at that point, I wanted to take on the challenge of trying to figure out how their API interacts with their website and then how to basically mimic their website within my Discord bot. And that's what I was able to do. And that's what I'm going to share within this video is the entire process that I went through in order to figure that out. It's actually fairly simple. And keep in mind that this exact process will be different depending on each individual website. And there will be some websites where this is very difficult to do due to authentication requirements. And I'll briefly touch on that towards the end of the video. But real quick, before we start, if you do need help with anything, then feel free to ask within the Worn Off Keys Discord server. We have a bunch of people joining every day, as you can see here, and we just passed 1800 members. Once you've joined, you can scroll down and ask your JavaScript questions within the JavaScript channel. And I'm sure someone will be able to help you out there. So with that said, Let's get started. Keep in mind that I'm going to be creating a new node project from scratch. This is not going to be specifically for Discord bots. However, you can implement the same concept within a Discord bot, of course, as I've done here. But if you're wanting to follow along from scratch, then let's go ahead and open up a console. I've now navigated to a folder for my new project, and I'm going to then initialize a new node project. So npm init dash y. And then I can open a Visual Studio Code within this folder with code dot. Of course, you can use whatever code editor you prefer. Now within here, I want to first create a new file. So make a new file here called index.js. And this is going to be the main file within this node project. We also need to import a package called Axios. So if I Google npm Axios and I go to the top link here, this is a package that makes it very simple for us to perform different HTTP requests. As you can see, it's very popular with over 12 million weekly downloads. And here we see installing using NPM is NPM install Axios. So let's go ahead and do that. NPM install Axios. Scrolling down here, we see some different examples. So we can require Axios. We can use a GET request, which is just simply going to pass in this endpoint. And then we're going to handle the result. And then we're going to handle the error. And so we'll be doing something kind of similar to this, but just with a post request. But first, let me explain how I know what actual endpoint to use and what actual request to use. So going back into source bin, if I minimize the console, I can then right click and go to inspect. And this is going to open up the developer tools. This might be on the bottom for you. I've moved it to the right. Doesn't actually matter. And we see a number of different tabs, elements, console, sources, and network. Network is where you want to go to. I can then scroll in a little bit to make this easier to read. And let's say that I want to actually upload something. So let's say, hello world, and then click on save. We then see these options right here. These are the different network requests that were sent. Some of them are just loading an image as we see from the .pmg right here. Some of them are loading JS. However, if we click on this one, we then see the request URL, which is source bin slash API slash bins. This is a post request. We can then scroll down, we see the response headers. And if we scroll down further, we see the request headers. And scrolling down even further, we see the request payload. Here we have files, which is an array, where the content is hello world, which is our exact text right here. And so this is the actual post request. I know it's a post request because that's the method request right here. This is the actual post request to actually upload the code to Sourcebin. Now this was actually incredibly simple to find. Obviously, it's just right at the top. In some other cases, you might find a bunch of different options. It might be dozens or even hundreds of them, depending on the website. And so you'll have to go through and typically you'll look for a post request if it's going to be sending data somewhere. If it's retrieving data, you might want to look for a GET request. There are a couple others, but those are the more common ones that you would find. 
Now, one thing to keep in mind is that under the request headers, if you're required to log in in order to do this, you might see some type of authentication tokens and those might change very frequently. And that's going to make a concept of recreating this incredibly difficult. Basically, your best bet there is to just hope that they have a public API documentation where you can pass in your own API key or API token. And then that might be the only way you're able to access this. However, in this case, you don't have to actually log in to an account in order to share code. And so with that said, I don't need request headers that is going to authorize my account because I don't have one. So now with that said, let's scroll up and let's try and mimic a call to this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'm going to go back to the Axios documentation and we need to scroll down to a post request because again, this is a post request right here. And so we're trying to basically mimic this exact API request to make Sourcebin think that their website is sending some code when in reality it's our Discord bot, it's our node project, whatever it might be. So now let's try and take a look at how to create a post request within Axios. I can go back to the documentation and I can do a search for dot post. And here we see this example right here. It seems like this object is going to be the actual body of the request, which is useful because that's what the actual payload is within our request right down here. If we scroll all the way down the request payload, this is going to be the body of the request. But however, this doesn't seem like it's going to allow us to use headers. And so in my case, I don't need headers, but in your case, you might need headers for whatever reason. We can then do a search for headers. And then scrolling down, we see this thing called request config. And this is going to be something where we can pass in a lot more options, no matter what type of request we're wanting to use. The reason why I know that is because the method right here, the actual request type is specified within this object. And so we can pass in post or delete or put or other type of HTTP requests within here. And so that gives me the idea that this entire object is going to be a parameter that we can always use no matter our request type. We then see the URL right here and scrolling down, we see that we have access to headers and scrolling down further, we have access to data. And typically you're either going to see data or body where for the actual payload request that we're wanting to use. And so I'm going to opt into this strategy rather than the typical post request, because this is going to give you a better idea of how to add an additional thing such as parameters or headers. However, in this exact use case for this video, we won't be using those, but in your use case, you might. So let's go ahead and try and use this object within an Axios request. First, we have to import Axios. So const Axios equals require axios. And then I'm looking to create a string, which is going to be a code snippet that we're going to be able to actually upload. I'm going to go back into discord and I'm going to copy this code right here. I can then go back and say const code equals a template literal, and I'm going to paste in the code right here. Now I'm looking to call axios and I'm going to pass in an object. This object is going to be structured in the same exact way that we see right here. So we want a URL, we want a method, we want headers, and we want data. In this case, we don't actually need headers, but if you were to use headers or if you were to use parameters within your request, you can specify those as well. So going back, we're gonna have our URL, we're gonna have our method, we're gonna have our data. So the URL is going to be the exact endpoint that we want to actually reach. Going back, we can scroll all the way up to the request URL. We can go ahead and copy this. Going back, I can paste this here. We then need a method. And this right here, we see request method is post. So we're wanting to type in post in all caps. And then the data is going to be structured in a very specific way. And this again will be different depending on each individual website. Scrolling down, we see the request payload. The entire object here has a files array. And inside of that array, we see content as hello world. So let's go ahead and try and mimic this within our request. So within data, we can say files, which is going to be an array. And within here, we're going to have content, which is going to be code, which is our exact variable right here that holds this code right here. We can then use dot then, which is going to be ran whenever this request was successful. We're going to get a result and we can console log what the result is. We're also going to have a dot catch, which will be ran if there's an error. We can then get the error and we can console dot error, whatever is inside of there. We can go ahead and save this and we can run the code using node index.js. And here we see this giant object right here. Most of this information is completely useless to us, but we do see this data right here. And again, data is typically going to be something that is returned when it comes to the actual results that we care about. So if I minimize the console and I go back into the browser here, under network, we can go to response 
and here we see this object right here. Now keep in mind the structure of this, we have an object here with key and languages as an array, and so if I go back into my console, here we see something very similar. So this is good. Now what does the key actually mean? Now at first I didn't realize this, but of course it only took a few seconds to realize that's the only other thing in the URL, is the actual key. So if I go to copy this, I'm going to highlight it and press enter within my console to copy. I can then replace the ending key on the current URL, which is just showing the hello world example. And I can paste in the new key, which is returned from our API call. And if I press enter, we now see our code that was uploaded from our own node application. So that's cool. But how do we actually access this and display a meaningful URL to a user? Well, we can just simply create our own URL depending on the actual key right here. So I'm going to copy this. Going back, I can say const URL equals a template literal. I can then paste this in. I can get rid of this. We then want to insert in response.data.key, which is going to give us access to this actual string right here. Now, instead of console logging response, I then want to console log the URL. I can then save this and I can rerun the code. We now get the source bin link. Keep in mind that the keys are different. So now I can go ahead and highlight this and press enter to copy it. Going back into my browser, I can open this in a new tab. And we then see the actual code that we want right here. And so this is a very basic example of how to reverse engineer an API that a public website has when they don't have any API documentation. This won't work for every website. And again, it will be different for each individual website because every API is created differently. However, this will typically work whenever you don't need to log in in order to access something. And so this is one example of those websites. And so I wanted to provide an example of this because a lot of people within my Discord server were asking how I did this. However, this is one example of one of the easier websites to do this with because there is no account required in order to upload your own code. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And again, if you do need help with anything, then ask within the Warnoff Keys Discord server, and I'm sure someone will be able to help you there. Thanks for watching.